Well, hello, friends. David Vos here again. And I've got something that I want to share with you that is going to be very interesting. Um, now, I found this on just flipping through. I think it was on YouTube or Facebook or something. And I thought, well, that looks interesting. I, I usually don't believe this kind of broad claim that somebody will say, oh, we found pyramids somewhere. Even though I've actually found pyramids myself. And I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to show you some pictures and I'm going to talk about some things that I've discovered. But before I get into that, I wanted to talk about this particular... There's, there's a couple of places on the internet saying that they found these pyramids that are twice as old as the ones in Egypt in Russia. Now, supposedly these are pictures of the pyramids, but there's several pictures here that I'm not sure. We don't even know if these pictures are of the same rock edifice or building or pyramid, or if they're just if they're just making this up. I kind of have my doubts because, first of all, the one picture there with the two pyramids and the little lake in the foreground. It, it just looks like it could just be a mountain. However, I'm going to show you some pictures of mountains like that in New Mexico and in Texas that I've explored that turned out to be a lot more than just a mountain. In fact, I'm going to tell you a story about one in New Mexico, a couple of them there, but, well, two specifically, but one of them which actually has a tunnel going down under the, the mountain that looks like a pyramid. And, well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. The other one has an altar and paleographic Hebrew writings and so forth. But, so, you know, don't let it fool you if it just looks like a mountain. Because when a pyramid is left for thousands of years, if it's that old, they don't look exactly like they used to. And, and remember... The pyramids in Egypt were, were hewn stone, carved out of granite, so they don't deteriorate very well. But some of the other pyramids, such as, and I've done a video on this, there's pyramids along the Mississippi. Oh, I'm not kidding you, and this is not a joke, and they're, they're absolutely, literally, very large pyramids, about the same size, about the same size as the ones in Egypt. But they weren't made out of stones, they were the mound builders. And for all practical purposes, it looks like they just put mud together and made these pyramids. So they've deteriorated quite a bit. But there's there's literally huge megacities all up and down the Mississippi. In fact, it is literally spoken of by Joseph Smith the prophet, who not only told these stories of the people that lived there and their civilization long before anyone ever knew about these pyramids along the Mississippi. This is before people went out west to find gold. And it really hadn't gotten around. People didn't know what these little mounds were. They didn't know they were pyramids. Nobody knew. But Joseph Smith stood on the same spots and declared that they were ancient civilizations. And he even gave the names of the cities and the, the, uh, the stories about the people who lived there. He pinpointed these particular areas. But as far as looking at some of these pictures, all right, so they look a little like mountains. And we don't know even if this is really something that they're taking seriously. According to, according to this website, these pyramids were found by archaeologists on the Kola Peninsula. And it says it proves the existence of ancient civilizations in Russia. And it says that currently archaeological excavations near the pyramids, which according to preliminary estimates are at least two times older than the ones in Egypt, have been resumed on the Kola Peninsula. Scientists who have previously made an expedition to these northern parts of Russia believe that the Kola Peninsula may be the ancestral home of the most ancient civilizations on Earth. A weighty argument for the hypothesis is the pyramids discovered by scientists 
and huge stone slabs. It says 9,000 to 40,000 years ago. Interestingly, all the pyramids are positioned clearly in the direction of east-west. It also turns out that the pyramids were rebuilt three times by ancient peoples, each time increasing them in height. And it says the question remains, who could have built these structures? Well, that's interesting, but like I say, I'm not sure exactly what we're looking at there. However, I can tell you some things that I have actually seen. In Texas, to start with, now sit back because I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that are just fascinating. And I don't think any of you have heard at least one or two of these stories. And it'll blow your mind because we have been lied to. There is a vast ancient civilization here which can be proven by just going to a few miles, about five, ten miles south of St. Louis and looking at that particular pyramid. But now, going out west, throughout Texas, you see these particular structures as you see on your screen. Now, a lot of you will look at that and say, well, those are just mountains and, you know, they've been eroded over time and stuff with water and stuff. And I agree, a lot of them, that's what that is. But it is interesting because what we're saying is, is that some of these mountains that just look like a mountain, perhaps, we've been conditioned to think that's what that is. Not so fast. Let me show you something here. And um, there's a little mountain called Mystery Mountain. It's not far from Las Lunas, New Mexico. I think apropos the titles and the names of these, this area. Um, if you, you know, that entire area is just absolutely, completely littered with petroglyphs. And, you know, it's funny how people go through there and they look at these little scribbles and look like little animals written on the rock. And a lot of people think, well, boy, these, these Native Americans must have been like children, you know, scribbling animals on the rock and, and not doing a very good job of that. And it just bewilders people. But you see, they didn't realize something. Those little animals are not what you think. They're astrological constellations. And they literally tell the time of year and even the date that these things were written down and these pyramids were built. These, these Which we're going to show there are pyramids, there are buildings, there are temples throughout New Mexico. And perhaps... Well, and another one I'm going to tell you about is in California. But um, but one of these particular mountains that we're going to talk about is this Mystery Mountain. Now, there isn't really any information on this mountain. Like, you can't really find it. You can't find a map to it. It's not a park. There's no parking out there in the desert to go look at it. It's simply a rumor that somebody had found... A, a strange mountain in New Mexico and there was some paleographic writing. So, you know, years ago, a scientist or two, a linguistic scientist or whatever, went out there and did some research and said, yep, it's paleographic Hebrew. It has to be real. It's got to be old because we couldn't even speak paleographic Hebrew or write it. We didn't understand it 50 years ago or 100 years ago, we're just now learning how to write and understand this language and interpret it. And so, the way that it is written on the rock and inscribed, it had to have been done by somebody who knew how to speak the language. For one, it isn't the exact paleographic Hebrew that we find in Israel before Christ. Because this Paleographic Hebrew was only known before Christ. It has to be B.C. Because after Christ, it changed into a block letter form. So it's completely different Hebrew. And so they lost all of their knowledge on how to speak the language or write it. But this particular writing appears to be slightly different. Like it's almost... Phoenician, or they're not sure exactly 
what it is. It looks like it, it almost has Greek looking letters kind of thrown in there. In other words, it seems to be a Hebrew tribe that perhaps didn't live in the same area as the Israelites in Jesus' day, but perhaps they had went through other lands and by bringing their language through another land, it changed slightly. Now, this we know is true. I mean, you can look at the Phoenician language and see this type of thing. It, it, it was very similar to Phoenician and, of course, also very similar to Hebrew, but not quite. And a scholar would be able to, to understand that it's not quite Hebrew or not quite Phoenician. In fact, it's very odd because... Joseph Smith claims that the Book of Mormon was written by a tribe of Israelites that had a language that is not exactly the same as the ancient Hebrew before Christ, but had some Greek letters thrown in. That's what he said it was like, that it had altered over a period of time. This writing is exactly what Joseph Smith said the Native Americans originally brought over to this country and spoke and wrote. And we have found evidence of that, not only here at this mystery mountain, because there's Hebrew, paleographic Hebrew all over this mountain. I'll show you the pictures of this big stone edifice that is written. There's the Ten Commandments written in paleographic Hebrew. But also in Colorado, along the Purgatory river there's some canyons there they have found petroglyphs there as well and mingled with the petroglyphs is hebrew letters and they found hebrew letters on the mississippi and in georgia there is a, another pyramid that they've discovered all over the united states they found these hebrew writings in fact another point to be mentioned here is the yanni Indians in California. Um, some years ago, there was a book called Ishi, The Last of the Indians. And I guess in the, during the gold rush, when everybody was going out there to, to mine gold, the, they ended up massacring all the Indians that lived in California. They all were gone. They had just about massacred all of them and there was this one little family left that consisted of one man and his sister and I think his mother and father or something. Well, they ended up all passing away and uh, I think they literally murdered them. And finally, they captured and brought into Butte County Jail this one last Indian and they brought in a linguistic scientist to study him and to see if they could figure out if they could communicate with him. So they, um, the guy would, would try to communicate in every language known to man, try and see if he could figure a way that he would respond. In the end, he found out that the man spoke Hebrew, very close to Hebrew. He asked him his name and the man said Ishi. And of course, that is the Hebrew word for man. Evidently, they wouldn't, speak their name they only said i am man and if you didn't know their name then you didn't need to be saying their name or something like that it was a a native american tradition in that area well there's a lot i could tell you about that and later on i want to talk about how in that actual area that butte county that we're talking about i have actually discovered a vast huge huge temple like edifice that to me, if you want to know what it looked like, it was very similar to the that huge Machu Picchu Inca temple down there in Peru. In fact, there is these large, I found large hewn stones that weigh many tons that were placed together. It's not a natural phenomen, phenomenon. They're very similar to the ones down in Peru. And that was up by Mount Lassen. It's a, there's a little creek that comes down off of Mount Lassen. There's several of them. They're like little canyons. One of them's Deer Creek and Mill Creek and Rock Creek.
And as you go down the ridge, going towards Chico, California, I did find some kind of a temple. But remember, that area is completely covered in lava. So there was only a small portion of this temple sticking up, sticking up out of the lava. And that was a, a really interesting story that goes with that um, that I'll tell you in another video. But anyway, for some unexplained strange reason, I have witnessed and I have seen many different things in my life. And I have witnessed quite a few ancient cities or ruins in my life. Partly because I go and investigate these things. You know, so I'm searching for them. So it's not like it's just coincidental. But it is strange because there were a couple of coincidental things in my life that took place. Um, now, one of the things that I found, I had heard about this mystery mountain and this Hebrew writing that's on the stone there. So I went and I looked and I tried to find it. Well, it was a very difficult thing to find. There's no instructions. There's no, um, there's no maps. And on the way out there, I noticed that the whole area in that particular area had this large fence and it was posted $5,000 fine. Do not enter. It was government military Land. I don't know if it's Air Force or Army or whatever. I never really paid any attention. But it was military government land. And they did not want you in there for some reason. But I was determined to find out what this thing was. So I snuck in there and I searched. And by a very miraculous means, I was able to, some, some would say very coincidentally, find this particular peak. And the actual spot where this paleographic Hebrew Ten Commandments is written in the stone. I have wondered if that was not a place that... Because it, it's a very odd place at the base of the mountain. It's not even at the base of the mountain. It's like about almost halfway up the mountain is this rock that seems to have moved since it was written. Because... I would think that if they wrote it on there, they would have written it straight. But it's not. It's tilted. It's very tilted. It's crooked. So it's definitely shifted over the years. And there does seem to be a lot of outcroppings there as if the ground beneath that big, huge rock that's now tumbled and almost fallen over on its side, it does seem like there's a little indention there, and it could be, with all the uh, outcroppings and shale rock and stuff there, it could be that it's an entrance. If one were to dig around there, it could be an entrance to some sort of cave or shaft. And the reason I say that is because this is indicative of a lot of these mountains. There's no question in, in my mind whatsoever that this mountain is a sacred mountain. As I said, we can prove, the scientists have proven that this writing is literally 2,000 years old. There are animal drawings right near the altar with, in paleographic Hebrew, Yahweh written across the altar. And right off to the left side of that is a stone with some animal drawings that appear to be astrological constellations marking the date of 106 BC. So I believe that's when it was written. That entire valley, though, there's uh, the Three Rivers area down there. There's all kinds of petroglyphs just all up and down that area. If you go further on down to uh, the City of Rocks, I mean, that is the most beautiful thing. If you ever want to go see something, just go to that particular area in New Mexico, starting from Albuquerque going down south to Las Cruces. And you'll stop off along the way at different various state parks that are just gorgeous. There's uh, uh, the River of Fire. I think it's the Rivers of Fire or something. There's the there's different beautiful little state parks. And, I, and it's just uh, uh, wonderful to go and visit these parks and look at the petroglyphs and various things. The City of Rocks is just fascinating because it's a appears to be an, an outcropping of rock, natural rock formations but they it's it's just like these little towers 
and they're all close together and you walk between them and there's some trees in there and it's real beautiful. You can have a picnic there. I don't think you can sp spend the night there, but it's just something that I found to be very beautiful. So check that out. But going back to this mystery mountain, that was quite a deal that day where I found that. There were extraordinary circumstances that pursued me that day. But I did find that day a particular treasure. And I have revealed what that was in prior videos some months and months ago. But it was a literal holy rock, much like the Urim and Thummim that the Israelites used in conjunction with the plate that they had with 12 stones on it. So what I found is a rock plate with other stones set in place in a square pattern. And it was used like an oracle stone or of, of some sort. I found it in a little outcropping of rocks at the base of this altar. And I've kept that rock to this day and I cherish it. And it's very, very important to me. But as I was coming down the mountain with this rock, there is a more like a little crevice kind of canyon that comes down off this sort of a peaked pyramid type peak. And I'm coming down this canyon through this crevice. And here comes the military, big black helicopters, the kind that have these two propellers that are in front that can go very fast, almost like a jet, that could be angled downward in such a way that it became a literally a very, very fast airplane. So it would switch between, I don't know what you call those, but I've seen them down there in that area. The military has them all over the place. They're like jets, but then all of a sudden they'll just hover and they can land right where you're at in the desert somewhere. So I see this thing coming straight for me and I realize, uh-oh, I may be on military land. And at first I thought, well, this is just a coincidence. They're just flying over. But then I realized, well, they're pretty low. And uh, I don't think that they'd be hovering this mountain unless they were looking for something. And probably they noticed that I was there and I wasn't supposed to be there. So I kind of started walking a little faster. And by that time they got overhead and they swooped down to where I could literally see the, the men in the cockpit and they were waving me down and they were going to land and probably take my rock from me and perhaps arrest me. I don't know because remember the sign says it's a $5,000 fine and can be imprisoned and everything. Well, I took off running as fast as my little feet could go. And it took them a minute to go down. They couldn't land the helicopter right there because I was it was just a steep little area with all these rocks. They just couldn't land there. So they had to go around the backside of the mountain to find a place to land. By that time, I ran down the hill and jumped into this uh, ravine and hid down there for a while until they got tired and left. So that is something that I have personally seen and found. And there's a picture, a few pictures here of that experience that I had. But, but like I said, what really is this? How common are these particular temples, pyramids in New Mexico? Well, I think it's far more common if we knew where all these were, but they're ancient ruins. Many of these, you can't even see that it's an ancient temple when you walk on it. It's been buried over by sand, uh, erosion. You don't even know what you're looking at. Well, there is a another peak that looks just almost identical to this one, just a few miles from there. And that one's called Victoria Peak. And I want to read you a little story about that one because it's very interesting. And boy, is it going to blow your mind to find out what they found in that mountain. Because um, it's like a little craggy outcropping. It's only like 500 feet tall. There's a big area of desert so this little mountain there is called this Victorio Peak. It's in Donna Anna County, New Mexico, not very far from the one that we just talked about. Anyway, some years ago, a man was out there digging around 
or whatever he was doing out there. And he came across this shaft. Well, I guess he found this big rock and he lifted it up and it was a hole. And he went down the hole and he claims that he found Indian writings all over the walls in this little cavern down beneath this, like a room. He says it was a, a small room beneath the mountain. And he found Indian writings and Indian trinkets and jewels. And he also found gold coins and gold bars. I know it sounds fanciful, but the story is well documented. Um, there's a, a place called White Sands Missile Range in that area down in New Mexico. It's a military base. They have commandeered it. They've stolen it. And now this is all well documented. And it's been documented that they recovered $2 billion worth of gold and artifacts from that particular cave. Now, people have wondered, what was this? Is this some ancient pyramid from, you know, as ancient as the Egyptian pyramids? Is this, is this the Egyptian gold? Is this the Montezuma? What is this, you know? So there's some various theories as to what this mountain was and how old it is and so forth. But the best of the theories, the one that fits most of the criteria, all of the criteria actually, and most people think this is the answer. I mean, it's pretty obvious this is the answer as to what really is going on here. Remember, the name of the mountain is Victorio Mountain. And uh, there was an, uh, an Indian chief whose name was Victorio. So the mountain was named for him after him and I'm going to read to you from a short article here in this webpage called Legends of America and um, I'll try and leave a link for that but but it says that Chief Victorio for whom the peak is named used the entire basin as his stronghold refusing to live on the San Carlos Reservation in Arizona where the government wanted to banish him. A treaty was reached between the tribe and the federal government in Washington that the Indians could stay upon the land in New Mexico. However, with the discovery of gold, the treaty was broken in 1878, and Victorio went on the warpath. Victorio knew how much the white man valued gold, and having little use for it himself, he amassed huge amounts of treasure by attacking the white settlers. His warriors raided southern New Mexico and Texas in all-out war against the United States Army and the Texas Rangers. Funny we never really ever hear these stories. I mean, some of us have heard of Custer's Last Stand, but boy, this is just the tip of the iceberg, friends. The, the, the pyramids that I was telling you about on the Mississippi River, they were there in 1500 with a thriving civilization. And then some Europeans came over right after that, even before Christopher Columbus, and they were completely wiped off the face of the map. And so now we're told, well, they're just gone. We don't know what happened to them. All right, well, here's another story that you probably haven't ever heard. So attacking wagon trains, settlements, mail coaches, and churches, he took anything from them that they valued. He was also known to take prisoners, where he subjected them to elaborate torture tests before killing them. See, I don't know if any of this is true. They're embellishing this part of the story, I suspect. Because I really don't think he would do that. But who knows? Maybe he had an incentive to do that. Maybe they were doing the same thing to him and his people, which I wouldn't doubt. But it goes on. This could possibly explain the skeletons in the cavern. Because they found, I guess, a whole bunch, like 40, 50 skeletons in, the, in this cave with their hands tied behind their back tied to a stake. And it would also explain the presence of the Wells Fargo bags. <laughs> that might explain that one too. Yeah, Wells Fargo. Remember, the they were the ones that were banking uh, by way of stagecoach. And uh, it explains the pack saddles and the letters and the artifacts dating to Victorio's time. Sounds pretty, pretty clear to me. But later, some researchers would conclude that the shaft was the very same one used by Padre Larue in the late 1700s, then later used again by Chief Victorio to store his stolen goods. 
This explains the thousands of gold bars, the antiquities, the artifacts dating back further. And friends, very likely Chief Victorio knew this, this particular location was an ancient holy site dating back even much further than this. And that's what I believe because of the actual mountains that I have witnessed and these ancient ruins and these temples that I have seen and the paleographic Hebrew in the area. And of course, don't forget, there's literally writings on the caves and on the walls all around that for some reason our government just chooses to ignore and they don't tell us what these messages and writings are saying. They tell the story of these individuals who came here. And there's another uh, bunch of writing up in Colorado that has a little story about how they came over here from the Middle East, from Israel. And one day I'll get into that if I have time. But anyway, the story goes that there was a lot of arguing and fighting going on as to who was going to get all this gold and all this wealth. And really, there was only a couple of people knew about it. The guy that discovered it and his wife, and then they ended up divorcing, and there was a big dispute about that. And then they told somebody about it because they were going to help him go blast a bigger hole. And at that point, the White Sands Missile Range moved in, and the government took it over. And it's rumored, pretty pretty obvious what happened, is that the government went in there, took all the money, took all the gold, took all the treasures, and they've locked it up and hidden it somewhere. And that's probably the same reason why they got this big fence around Mystery Mountain where I went. And that's why I believe that there's more than just this big, huge rock with paleographic Hebrew. But if a person could look around, but see, I was only there for a few minutes, literally, uh, you know, an hour or two, and boom, they came swooping in with helicopters. So it is very dangerous. And this other place I'm talking about is literally on a the White Sands Missile Range. And it's all military and you it's all fenced off. You don't go in. And if you do and they catch you, I don't know what they do to you. But I know there's a big fine and use jail time and they might even shoot you. I don't know. I mean, who knows what they would do to you. But um, it's very dangerous going around. There are some other sacred spots throughout New Mexico that I have looked at and, and explored a little bit. But I still have a lot more to explore, friends. And I've even thought about one day seeing if I can find a way into this missile range without them detecting me and seeing if I can find where this hole is. Now, there's also rumors of caverns and temples and so forth down in the Grand Canyon, which I do not know if that is factual. I haven't done a lot of research into that. And uh, again, there's all of this stuff I found in California that I haven't fully, I didn't get to go back and take pictures of it. This is something I discovered years ago. I've also discovered some very sacred Indian ruins in Wyoming that I want to go back and, and take pictures of and explore and investigate. And um, if I could, there's some things I'd like to see in Egypt too, that I've even talked about in some of my videos that I know that there is a labyrinth beneath this, the sand down there in Egypt that would be very, very interesting to see what's in there today because it is supposed to house all of the records of mankind. It's called the Hall of Records. And as far as I know, it's still there. I know I've heard reports that there are Egyptians, you know, military posted at certain locations down there so that you cannot explore the area. Same thing is true of the area up in Iraq. Now imagine the only reason we know about Heliopolis and the labyrinth and the Library of Alexandria and all of these things is because it's more recent history. And we have historians like Herodotus that explain some of this history to us. But the stories going back to Babylon, all we basically have of that is the Bible story that they were trying to build a tower unto God. Now, that is a parable, my friends. 
They may have been definitely building a tower. Just look at the Great Pyramid. That's a tower, the Pillar of Enoch. But it's what's in the pillar that's important. It's the artifacts. It's the knowledge, the wisdom, where the channels, where all the shafts point to and the astrological wisdom and science that they knew. And underneath the pyramids, there are shafts and tunnels and libraries and jewels and artifacts that would boggle the mind. And so, you know, remember, Iraq is a place that they don't want anybody in there today. It's military guarding the whole area. And it has been for some time. One day we're going to be able to find out what's underneath that Tower of Babel. What library lies there. And that will, that along with the Hall of Records in Egypt, when they finally dig those two libraries up, will have all of the history all the way back to the beginning of our planet. It's not lost, friends. Our Father in Heaven has kept it. Remember the Nag Hammadi Library was dug up in 1945. It's not lost. Our Father in Heaven has preserved our history. So, anyway, just a quick little video. Kind of whet your appetite because, because eventually I'd, I'm going to be doing some exploring and I want to start covering a lot of this information. But I'm going to go ahead and go, friends. I hope you guys have a really great day. This is David Vos and we'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good one.